You may have noticed there haven't been any videos for a while. Um, that's partly because I've been away and visiting family and then having family come up and stay with me. It's also because I've got three videos like half recorded, um, nearly there. They will, they will all appear in the in due course. But, uh, but for now, I thought I needed to kind of clear the decks, start with something new. And um, when I get a bit stuck, I always go back to drawing mandalas. They're relaxing to make. There's something really kind of calming about them. It's, it's probably, well, I know it's the repetition. You repeat really simple uh, shapes over and over again, and they build up into something complex. And that's that's at the heart of kind of making art that I love. Uh, so I find these really a kind of good reset. So if I get stuck uh, with art, with making, knowing what to make, I always go back to mandalas. Um, and I thought I'd show you how I make them. So I've done a couple on this channel before, but uh, yeah, there's lots of different varieties and every single time I do them, they turn out different. So I thought there was no harm in doing another one. So I've got my square sketchbook. This is my handmade sketchbook. I've got a selection of fine liner pens. I'll start with a 0.3, uh, which is kind of a medium size. Uh, and then I've got some finer ones and some thicker ones for adding kind of different layers of detail towards the end. Uh, I've got a pair of compasses. These ones are great. I've got a pencil, a bit of a manky eraser and a ruler. So I'm going to start by finding the centre of the page. Okay, now I'm going to make a guide. So I'm going to decide how big I want my mandala to be. And I can go as big as 10 centimetres, so why not? So let's bring my compasses out to 10 centimetres. Place that in the middle and then draw a circle. So I'm going to do an eight segment mandala. So I am going to uh, need to do a little bit of measuring for that. But uh, what I can do now is I can draw concentric circles all the way into the center. And I'm just going to go down at maybe two centimeter intervals. So these ones are eight centimeters. And then we'll do six, four, and two. I think I'm also going to do a one centimeter because I tend to do smaller elements right at the center and then make them bigger as I go out. I may even do three as well. You don't have to make these regular, you can make them whatever distance you like. You just want to put in enough to give you guidelines to follow. So I think that's going to be a good start. So now I'm going to measure, so let's see, I'm going to measure halfway in from the page and that's 10.5. So if I measure 10.5 in from the top as well, there we go. And from the bottom. Then that will give me a vertical line. Now I can use, so I'm going to use the eight centimeter line. And I, it doesn't matter what size you make these as long as it's more than halfway. And I'm just going to make um, some marks there. And then from the eight centimeter line at the top, and I can make another mark there. And then that should be divided into four. Of course, if I'd got more paper at the edge, I could have done it from the 10 centimeter mark, but I would need to make the cross kind of about here, so off the edge of the page. So I did it from the eight centimeter mark instead. Now I want to divide this in half again. So I'm going to do the same thing. So I'll take from the eight centimeter mark on there. Oh, let's do the other side as well. On there. 
one there. Right, so now I've got all marks that I can measure up and I just want to make sure that I'm going through this point, this point and through the centre. Now that's enough guidelines for me to start. Uh, I'm going to keep my compasses, ruler and pencil on hand uh, because I may want to put in some more guidelines as I go. Uh, but I don't know what they're going to be yet, so um, I'll uh, I'll just put them to one side and then if I need them I can pick them up again and add in any more marks that I fancy. So I'm going to start right at the centre and now I've got eight little segments in each, uh, each bit of the circle. Uh, all I need to do is to make some really simple marks uh, in those um, eight segments and then go around the circle making the same marks in each one. When you start at the centre, there's a kind of limited number of shapes that you can make in a space like that. So I'm going to do some little petal shapes like this, and they're going to meet right in the centre of that segment. So I'm following the the kind of the dividing lines to about halfway and then curving back in and meeting in the middle. And you may think that some of your petals look bigger than others and they're maybe not all quite straight but actually I really like that. I like the look of a hand-drawn mandala and I like it when it doesn't look Perfect. Yeah, I can see my two bottom ones are slightly bigger than my two top ones. And you know what, by the time I get to the edge, you're not going to notice that. In fact, you may not notice this now, but I, I do. But by the time I've finished it, I won't notice that. I usually find that the first few marks you make kind of create a pattern that um, then you can repeat up, right up until the edge, or you can repeat the same elements in that pattern. So um, they start quite similar, but they will kind of change as, as, as it goes on. I think I'm going to put some little curved lines in between here. Like that. And then I kind of want to build on that and make that, that a bit taller. I don't want to go all the way to the next line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roughly work out where halfway is between this point and this point, and I'm going to put a little dot there. And I'm going to go around the circle and put a dot at that point. And then I'm going to draw a curved line from the end here up until the dot. And then the same on the other side. And that helps me keep them fairly even. The tendency if you're working round a circle is to you'll start quite small and then they'll get bigger and bigger as you go around and you get to this point and you go oh that's much bigger than this one. But if you put those little dots in it just helps you keep them even. So now I've kind of repeated this petal shape and I've kind of made it double the size and overlap, which is quite interesting. So I could repeat my little curved line here in between these and I think I'll do that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to not bring that to a point. I could bring that to a point up here uh, and fill in this little petal shape here, but I'm going to keep that curved shape. I'm going to join this point to that point with a little curve. And I can see from my first one that there's a bit of a gap between the top of the curve and the next pencil line. So I'm going to try and keep that same gap all the way around. So now what I think I want to do is go back to this shape here, right in the middle, and repeat that. So you tend to, oh, I tend to alternate between kind of filling in 
in between shapes. So now I've got a little V here, so I kind of need something to fill in there. So if I repeat that kind of petal shape, maybe come to this halfway point here. and keep that going round. So when I get to the end of like a circle, I don't really know what the next shape is going to be. I don't really know what, ne what the next mark is that I'm going to make. But I know that if I make a simple shape and then repeat it all the way around, eventually it'll build up to be something quite interesting and nice. And now I feel like I need, do I need something new? I could use that kind of half petal shape and create like a, a lid over that and um, go from the center point of here up to the here to where this these lines intersect so I think of this is like a fan shape there how's that And you'll probably see that some of my little kind of petal shapes are a bit wobbly as well. They're not all quite the same shape, but again, I quite like that. So now again, I've got these V shapes and I could do with kind of repeating this pattern of this little half circle or the little arc and just put that in there. And then I could repeat that by putting the same arc shape up here, but I think that's a bit predictable because I've got exactly the same shape in the kind of the layer before so I want to do something a little bit different so yeah so what I might do is instead echo this shape coming up to this point here and then I've got this kind of curve here so I'm going to try and mirror that curve that come to come down there like that same on the other side I'm just trying to mirror this shape and then when I come to do the next one, I'm going to try and mirror this shape, but do it here. Like that. And then the same on the other side, I'm mirroring this shape and coming down here. And carry on all the way around. Oh, I made, a me I made a mistake there. Never mind. You know what? I'm going to make the line that I would have made anyway. That one. And then I'm going to keep going. And then you know what? If I repeat this mistake all the way around, I reckon that's going to look quite nice. So let's do that. So, from there, up to the corner. Well, that was totally not what I intended at all, but actually I really like that. And now I'm wondering if I can put this kind of shape in anywhere else. Could I go back and, yeah, I think I could go back and put that kind of double line in here as well. And then, yeah, just in there. So yeah, so what was a mistake has now made my drawing look a lot more interesting. So right, let, let's carry on now. Okay. So I think I'm going to start with little petals again. And I'm going to put my little dots in around this circle. Just kind of coming out from there, trying to... I'm trying to estimate what's halfway between these two lines. I'm not measuring it. 
not this time, but a little dot might help me just keep things on track. And then I'm going to draw that little kind of skinny petal into the centre of that V. So, do I need something around that, over it? Where would it come from? Where would it go to? I think it would come from here and it would go to a point that's kind of halfway right in the middle of this segment. So from here to there and there to there. So I'm going to put that little dot in each segment and I'm going to draw these lines. Now I think is the time to repeat this little fan shape. And so I'm going to do that in here. Um, whereabouts? I'm not sure. Kind of want it to go up here, like that. And this one's getting quite big, so at this point I'm going to bring in my compasses again. And I can draw a little series of arcs around the circle. So now I can, and I'm going to freehand draw a line that follows roughly where my compass point has gone, but I'm not doing it exactly, because if this was exact and the rest wasn't, it would be really obvious. Also the points aren't quite in the right place. Now I want to put in a, a circle below that that echoes that shape. So the distance here is about the same as the distance here. I'm going to pull my paper down a little bit and work on one section and, and then move my paper around now. Um, just so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Um, but also when I'm drawing these big lines, it helps me to turn the page so that I can get them more even. So I'm going to do my little petal shapes. Same here, same here, same here. And then I think I want a line that joins this to the top of that, that echoes this line here. There, that's good. I said I was going to curve the page, didn't I? And then I didn't. Never mind. Hope you saw what I was doing. <laughs> right, now the obvious thing here seems to be to join this and this with this point here. Again, with that kind of curved petal shape. There. Right, now I'm going to turn the page. Oh, see what I did there? Gone too far. You know what I'm going to do now then? 
You know, just do something. It doesn't look right. Right, so I'm going to have to go round and repeat this mistake all the way around as well. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. So right, I think one more last curve in this section here and the same all the way around. Um, and again, I'm going to use the compasses. Let's go from this point and see how that works. I've zoomed you out again because what I also like to do with um, eight petal mandalas is to give them a square frame. So I think I'm going to do that as well. So um, I can work out how far 10 centimetres from this centre line. 10 centimetres is there and there. And then let's bring that in a little bit. So, um, if I bring it in. Two centimeters and one and a half centimeters. And then draw another. Oh, that wasn't very good. Draw another little box around there. Uh, in each segment, I'm going to draw my little petal. That's a good start. And I'm only going to draw them in the corners. These ones. That's because I haven't quite decided what I'm doing with this frame yet. Some bits of the frame are going to go behind the drawing and some bits will be in front and I'm not quite I'm not quite decided yet so I'm having to think about it and while I think about it I'm just doing these ones. Right so I'm going to draw this line around here and we'll stop there carry on on the other side there. So it's gone over the over the top of the outer frame and underneath the inner frame. So let's do that with all of them. I want to repeat that line and I want to be sure that you can see that that's, that's kind of going underneath there. So I'm going to do it from uh, this point here.
And then you know what? I am going to put these little petal shapes on the four extra points because I think that would look good. Right, now I'm going to put the line of the frame in. So this one is going to go up here and out there. This one is going to go out here and down there. So I'm going to do this freehand, but I'm following the pencil line that I've already ruled. Doing the frame makes it much more complicated. So if you if you are struggling with this, then just leave it out. Just just do the mandala, just do the circle design. It's absolutely fine. I just like to make things a little bit extra because I'm awkward. I can never just do something simple. So that one there. And then this one here. And then this one. I stop there and start again on the other side. So now I've done one quarter, I do the same thing exactly on each of the other quarters. Now I've worked my way from the centre all the way to the edge and you may think that this is finished but to me this is not, this is only the start. Um, what I'm going to do now is go back to the centre um, and start adding in details. So I've got more different size pens, I've got a nice fine one, a 0.1 and then I've got some thicker ones, 0 0.5, 0 0.8 and I'll use these to colour in some areas or to thicken up some of these lines. And then I'll use this one to maybe kind of draw some double lines or to shade some areas in with um, stippling or some fine lines. I've not decided yet because I'm making this up as I go along. But first, because this drawing is getting a little bit confused, I'm gonna take away uh, my pencil marking so far uh, and see, it helps me to see what the what the actual mandala looks like and not get confused by all of the guidelines. darker sections really kind of makes it pop. You also want to make sure you leave some white space as well.
this point I feel like we're nearly there. It just needs, I don't know, it needs a little bit of something. So I'm thinking I might do something in these bits around the edge. And then I think there's something more needed in the centre, so I think I need a little bit more darkness in there. Hello darkness. You know what, I feel like these little eyelashy bits, I don't like them so much. So I want, I do want some more dark in the centre, so I'm going to colour in all over those bits. It's always a worry doing this because you never know whether you're making it better or worse. And once you do one, you've got to keep going. So there we go, that is my mandala and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan this in and put it as a colouring page on my website so if you fancy having a go colouring this in then you can download it from there. And if that's something that you're interested in I also have an ebook of other mandala designs on my website which you can download for free. Um, I do like to see them, um, so if you have a go at this, if you have a go at making a mandala from simple shapes um, and working out from the centre, um, I'd love to see what you come up with. Um, you can always tag me in any of the work that you do on Instagram um, at Lou Rachel Davis, and yeah, I love to see everything that you make from the tutorials that I put up here. So I look forward to seeing you again in another video very, very soon. Bye bye.